Good day and welcome back to another topic on the whiteboard series. Today we'll be talking about water and changes of states. Now I thought that this would be a very good chapter to actually talk about after we have taken a look at the revision topic on heat. So if you have not, please take a look at the topic on heat which I have uploaded earlier. So just a general uh, description of what we'll be talking about. So in this chapter, we are actually going to talk about uh, water and how heat can actually change uh, the state of water. So water as we know it, it's usually in the liquid form, but water can take on different states. And this has got to do with um, the gaining or losing of heat. This is why I say it is very important to actually take a look at the chapter on heat before going on to this chapter. Now, it is also important to note that this chapter will be related to the next chapter where I will talk about the water cycle, something that um, you would need a good concept of changes of states in water to be able to understand. So without further, further ado, let's start. Now, first things first, we have to recall that there are three states of matter. Now, these three states of matter, which you have learned in primary four, would include liquid, solid and your gas. So each of these states actually have their own characteristics. So um, if you remember, when we talk about the states of matter, we always look at um, whether or not they have a, a definite shape or a fixed shape. We also look at their volume. Alright, these are the two things we will look at. So shape, we can have definite or we can have non-definite. Alright. So some of you may ask me, what do you mean by definite and non-definite? So a very quick recap is that definite means that the shape is um, fixed. All right, you cannot change it in any way. So an example, a very quick example, a solid shape of, let's just say, um, uh, a cube of metal. Even if you put it in a circular glass, right? So you have this cube that is made of metal it is solid, you put it into a glass that is maybe, say, circular in shape, you realise the cube may be able to fit in, but it will still retain the shape of a cube inside the vase. All right, It does not take the uh, shape of the vase. That is what is meant by fixed. Now, for non-definite shape, for example, liquid has non-definite shape, if I were to actually pour liquid into any shape, the liquid will take the shape of the container. All right, just a very quick recap. And for volume, you have once again a definite volume and a non-definite volume. So just to a quick recall, volume refers to the amount of space that a substance occupies. Now, in short, uh, many of you can say, oh, it's the size of an object. Yes, that may be true. 
but as um, students of science, we will want to use a more scientific term. Hence, we use the term volume here. So something with a definite volume uh, tells you that th the space that it occupies cannot be changed. Okay, so for example, water has a definite volume. Uh, you cannot change it. You cannot squeeze it to become smaller. However, non-definite means that you are able to compress it for it to become smaller. A very classic example, if you would recall very quickly, is whereby you have a syringe and then you let it occupy, um, uh, let's just say the plunger is all the way up here. So your gaseous, your gaseous particles will be here, occupying all the space, where, represented by the blue dot. And what happens is that when you squeeze or when you push the plunger in this direction, all right, bringing it down here now, all the gases here will be squeezed into this area here. as you can see from my drawing, right? So when you compare the two, you realize that, oh, now the space has gotten a lot smaller. The amount of space that uh, the air has uh, occupied for now is a lot smaller than previously, where I have not pushed the plunger down. So this is known as compression, all right? Just in case you have forgotten, I'm just going to pan it down. However, you have to understand that um, gas can go the other way round as well. So if I were to now pull my plunger back, all the way back to here, the gas would now occupy all the space that I've given it, all the extra room and space and everything else. So as you can see, it doesn't have a definite volume all right so it can change so that's a very quick recap on um the three states of matter if you have forgotten you really need to go back and revise all right because this um, topic is really on water and the changes of states not so much about the three states of matter so i would upload another video talking about that later on all right so let's continue So now that we have a quick uh, recap on what is um, the difference, what are the different states, we can now move on to the next part. So basically, what is water? Water is a natural resource that is found on Earth. Okay, it is very uh, precious. Now, the reason why is it precious is because not all uh, the water is easily accessed. So most of this water, uh, it actually is frozen. So where can you find it? It's frozen in the Arctic. So you can do, you see those icebergs? Yes, the iceberg that actually sunk Titanic um, is actually made up of water in its frozen state, in a solid state, all right? And a lot of water is actually in our oceans, which are which is too salty to use. It's not pure water. It's actually water that has a lot of other things in it. It's actually just salt. There is dirt. There is bacteria and everything else. So um, it's really not easy to get this water. Now, most of the water that we we can get uh, access to, they mainly fall as rainwater. All right, or water that has melted at the top of uh, mountains, and then they flow down. All right, so when it flow downwards, we are able to actually um, obtain it when it reaches the bottom of the mountain. Now, um, the next thing is that we have to understand that uh, when water uh, exists in the three, three states, there are different names for it. Okay, so I'm just going to very uh, quickly explain to you. So when you have states of water, 
you first have the liquid state which is just known as water and then after that uh, you can have the gaseous state which is known as water vapor and then after that you also have water in solid state and that is known as ice. So I hope I have given you uh, enough information to keep us started. So how does water, uh, how do the states actually change? Let's start off right in the center with our liquid water. Now, so remember I told you that uh, the changes of state actually involves heat gain and heat loss. So if we start with something that um, we are very familiar with, let's talk about your favorite um, ice cream or rather ice popsicle. You have something that it becomes solid, right? And remember the solid form of uh, water is known as ice. So I'm just going to pan it down here. Now, in order for a liquid to become a solid, it needs to lose heat. Okay. So when I'm doing this, I like to ask my students to actually imagine that they are the substance. So I ask myself, in order for me to become solid all right so i'm a i'm a let's just say a liquid cup of water and i get placed into the freezer how then i how then do i become solid am i losing heat or am i gaining heat so in this case uh let's recap back i told you that heat always travels from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature so think about it when you are a cup of water in the freezer, are you having a higher temperature than the surrounding of the freezer? And the answer is yes. And this is why you would lose heat, all right, to the surrounding of your uh, freezer that you're in. And then eventually you would freeze to become a solid ice cube when you have reached freezing point. So this process of becoming a solid is actually known as freezing. Now I know that I'm introducing a lot of new terminology to you, so please take the time to actually remember because these are um, these are key terms that you need to include in your answers. Later on, I'll talk about it a little bit more. So this is called freezing. This is a process, and then from once you freeze already, let's just say you've decided, okay, um, how do I then reverse the process? So you take it out of the freezer, you put it outside. Now, once again, ask yourself, you are now being taken out of the freezer, placed outside, right, of the environment. So let's just say your room temperature is about 30 degrees, you are about negative uh, 5 degrees. Which environment actually has a higher temperature. So in this case, you will realize that, hey, the environment actually has a higher temperature than me and I am gaining heat because heat travels from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature. So therefore, for me to become a solid to liquid, I would need to gain heat. Sorry. Okay, I will need to gain heat. And when I'm gaining heat, this process, which whereby I would change from a solid to a liquid is known as melting. All right. So now that I've become a liquid water, 
can I become another state? And the answer is yes. Now, the next process I want to talk about is actually um, from liquid to gas. Now, from liquid to gas, um, there are two processes. One talks about evaporation, while the other talks about boiling. But in both process, they are very similar, but yet very different. Now, it is a common uh, question to ask students, what is, the, what is the difference between these two? So I will talk about it in a little bit more as when I move on to boiling and evaporating later on. So let's just say now I want to become a gas. So how do I do it? Now, once again, okay, uh, for me, now I'm liquid, right? I want to become a gas. The way to do it is actually to gain heat. All right? So for me to become a gas, I would gain heat. From where? Now, it depends. What are you talking about? So remember, I told you there are two processes. One is actually boiling and the other one is evaporation. Now, I'm going to talk about evaporation first because it is something that we have all experienced. So where have we experienced it? For example, have you thought about um, t at the times whereby you ran and you started sweating so the su uh, or perspiring? So the perspiration that is on you, the droplets of perspiration that is on your skin, where did it go to? It, well, the answer for you is it actually became uh, a, a gas, all right? And it just goes into your surrounding. So how did that happen? Now, the perspiration droplets on your hand actually gain heat from the surrounding as well as your body temperature. So when it gains heat, it will actually evaporate, okay? And if you are talking about boiling, now, in that sense, then the heat gain does not come from its surrounding uh, per se, but it will come from a heat source. So for example, if you have seen your parents boiling water before, they put it onto the stove, there might be a fire or a heating element. Okay, it could be an induction cooker, ceramic cooker, stove with an open fire. So the most simplest form, the open fire would be the source whereby it has a higher temperature than your water that you want to boil. So heat will then travel from the heat source, which is your fire, into your water, chaos causing it to boil. So once it boils, it becomes gas. Okay? Now, once you've become a gas um, and you want to return to being a liquid state, do note that you will need to lose heat. Okay? And this process of losing heat and then becoming a liquid once again, this process is called condensation. All right? So, once again, let's recap this process because this is this heat gain and heat loss, this interplay of it, is very, very important in helping us decide whether is it um, is, is the driving force behind the different processes. All right? So, let's start once again. Okay? So, when you have a liquid and you want to become a solid, you would actually lose heat. And from a solid, when you want to become back to a liquid, you basically would gain heat. And from a liquid, you want to become a gas, you basically gain heat. Now, there are two processes by which you can do so either by evaporation or boiling. These two are very different, which I will talk about in a little while. Now, from a gas, if you want to become 
back to a liquid, you need to lose heat again, and this is called condensation. All right, so in all your answers, you have to tell me, is it a heat gain or heat loss that leads to the process? All right, like how I've explained to you, which I will demonstrate to you later on again. Now let's move on for now. So the first thing about, um, uh, I want to talk in detail about the first process is known as freezing. So there are two important temperatures that you need to know of. Something called the freezing point and melting point. Now the freezing point and melting point are actually the same temperature. They refer to uh, a specific temperature for every single type of elements. So elements are basically the most simplest and the purest form of any substance. So for example, you talk about gold. Gold in its purest form will have a very specific melting point and freezing point which are the same temperature. Same with water. Water also have a very specific melting and freezing point when the water is 100% pure. Now, what is this melting and boiling point? Okay, at your level, it's, on, it's enough to actually talk about water alone. So the freezing and melting point for water is actually zero degrees Celsius. All right, so when you put a, a, a glass of water, okay, into the fridge now, and you want to freeze it. Now, let's just say this cup of water is at, say, 30 degrees. Now, the surrounding of your freezer could be negative 16 degrees. So what would happen is that heat would travel from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature. And eventually, your temperature would start to drop. Now, when will it start to actually freeze? Now, the temperature needs to reach its freezing point, which is 0 degrees Celsius. So when the temperature reaches 0 degrees Celsius, you will get ice. Or rather, ice will start forming. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. Do you realize that um, I told you that uh, zero degrees is actually the melting and the freezing point? Both. So you'll be asking me, Mr. Chong, if let's just say this is your freezing point and your melting point, shouldn't it also melt and freeze exactly at zero degrees Celsius? My answer to you is yes, if the temperature is kept exactly at 0 degrees Celsius. So it will be melting and freezing and melting and freezing and melting and freezing. Okay, in a continuous cycle, you, it, you will not get a, a glass of ice that is completely solid. It will be like a, a, a slushy of some salt. Uh, this is why freezers they are always below zero degrees Celsius. But what I'm trying to tell you is that it will start to freeze and continue to become a solid state until the entire glass of water becomes solid, which is actually um, ice now, essentially. Okay? So this is what it's meant by now, uh, sorry, freezing. So the reverse actually happens when it comes uh, to melting. So if you were to take the, the, the glass of ice now out, okay, uh, the ice doesn't have to be at zero degrees. So remember, you actually have um, something at negative 16 degrees for your freezer. Your ice cube can now actually be at negative 16 degrees. And your environment could be at 30 degrees. So in this case, heat will start to travel from your environment into your ice cube, causing it to gain 
in heat, increase in temperature, and then melt. When would it start to melt? Think about it. I'm going to give you one second. Very good. At zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so it'll continue to gain heat until all the solid ice cube has become a part of water. Every single bit of it. Okay, so I just want to be clear about freezing point and melting point. They are the same. Um, there is one more other point that you need to know, which is boiling point. And yes, you probably would have guessed it. Boiling point is the specific temperature for a particular type of substance to boil. So for example, the boiling point of water is actually at 100 degrees Celsius. So it will not boil any, uh, any temperatures below 100. That's not called boiling. It will not, uh, you should not say that it boils at any temperature uh, that is higher than that. Okay? So I will talk about boiling in a little while. So let's focus on um, freezing. Now, so whenever you talk about uh, a change in temperature due to the processes. So remember, the processes would be freezing, melting, as well as... Uh, condensation, evaporation. I'm just going to pan it down, okay? For, for easy reference. So we have freezing. We have melting. We have evaporation or boiling. We also have condensation. So whenever you want to describe the process of these uh, processes, you have to talk about heat gain, heat loss, and you've talked about the change in temperature, and of course, what is the process, which I'm going to talk about. But to help us with the description part, I want you to remember this uh, acronym, okay, short form. So I'll be using a lot of... Um, short form with these acronyms to help you actually remember what do you need to talk about in, when you're describing these processes. So the first one that I want to actually introduce to you uh, would be H T P S. So what does HTPS stand for? And it's so difficult to remember. So I always try to help you uh, make sense of um, what does it stand for. So you can remember it as happiness takes place in the sun. So happiness takes place in the sun. So what do they actually talk about? Now, happiness actually refers to heat gain or loss. T stands for, is there a temperature increase or decrease? And then after that, P actually stands for process. So is it evaporation? Is it condensation? You have to state it in your description. Last but not least, you have to tell me what is the state change. So what do I mean by that? So did it change from a liquid state to a gaseous state or a liquid state to a solid state or a solid state, uh, changing back to a liquid state? You have to tell me that. So happiness takes place in the sun is a very... Um, uh, easy way to remember or as if you can come up with a better short form please let me know i'll be happy to actually uh, listen to you so let's see how we can apply this short form so in the very first one that we're going to talk about let's talk about freezing
So remember, we have our acronym here, happiness takes place in the sun. Okay, we're going to keep referring back to here. So in freezing, always imagine that um, you are the substance. Okay, so now you are a cup of water being placed inside a freezer, for example. So what happens is that when you are a free, uh, inside the freezer, ask yourself, okay, are you actually gaining heat or losing heat? That's the first thing. So first thing, right? H, right? So when the liquid water or the water, so once again, you are in the freezer, you have a high temperature, so you should be losing heat loses heat to the surrounding all right so that's our first point the temperature starts to decrease and remember when I talk about freezing there is actually a specific temperature so we need to include it that okay so when the temperature decreases to melting point always include it you, you can do a bracket that's fine zero degrees Celsius the water starts to, remember, process, freeze, and changes from a liquid state to a solid state. So this is how I will use HTPS, happiness takes place in the sun to help me describe the state change. So let us take a look at um, each component I'm talking about. So in the very first part, I talk about uh, heat loss over here, which stands for H. I then talk about how the temperature starts to drop and reaches melting point. So this is on temperature. Then I talk about how the water would freeze. That's the process. And then it changes from a liquid state to a solid state. This is actually your state change. So once again, um, I've exemplified. So this is a very good framework for you to describe all the different process. So let's go on to actually look at um, the next process that we want to talk about. Let's just talk about melting. So for melting, we know that water is in a solid state, correct? So we can assume that it's actually ice. So we say that um, we can start off by when the ice gains heat from the surrounding now it is very important to actually talk about uh, what is the heat source is it from the surrounding or did you put a candle under the, the ice and it's actually good to tell me where is it from so in this case I'm just gonna assume that I took the ice cube out of the freezer and I and, the, and I just placed it outside so I can see from the surrounding uh, if you want to be long-winded, you can go ahead and say that, oh, the surrounding, which has a higher temperature than the ice cube. You could do that. That's perfectly fine. And remember, after saying that it has gained heat, the next thing we need to talk about um, um, T, which is temperature. The temperature increases, right? Because 
if you are the ice cube, you're actually gaining heat because now the surrounding has a high temp higher temperature than you. So the temperature would increase. And then after that, you talk about when the temperature increases to melting point. Once again, melting point and freezing point, they are the same temperature, 0 degrees Celsius. Sorry, I'm just going to write this properly. What happens? The ice starts to melt. This is your process for P. And then you can talk about stage change, right? The solid ice changes from a solid state to a liquid state. Okay, so once again, very quickly, I'm just going to show you how did I apply uh, the framework. So you have H and then you have T and then you have um, P, the process, and then last but not least, S, the state change. Okay. And then we're going to talk about uh, boiling and evaporating okay now for boiling okay is actually a change of state from your liquid to um, your gaseous state so the same thing happens over here we use H TPS happiness takes place in the sun. So first thing you have to tell me is so assuming that you put a pot of water on the stove. All right, so that's the context. So you would say, okay, do it together with me. If you've got a pen and paper now, that would be great. Practice it. So the first thing, heat. So you will say that the water gains heat. Let's just say you put it on the stove. There's an open fire from. the fire all right so check let's talk about temperature does it increase or decrease so imagine you are the water that's getting boiled you are actually taking in heat from the flame so you will increase the temperature increases now remember um, boiling has a fixed temperature so you have to say when the temperature reaches boiling point, which is actually 100 degrees Celsius. So you have talked about temperature. The next thing you want to talk about is actually your process. The water will start to boil so that is your process and then last but not least liquid water changes to gaseous state now uh, remember I told you what is uh, the specific name for gaseous water and that is actually water vapor okay so start to familiar yourself with these terms so then this will be the state change as simple as that okay nothing complicating the very last one that i want to talk about is actually um oh sorry there is actually two more uh the next one would actually be con uh evaporation which I promised that I would talk a little bit about it. Okay, now for evaporation. Now, evaporation does not happen at 
any temperature. Oh, sorry, at, at, at a specific temperature. It happens at any temperature. All right, that's the first thing we need to know. Um, and that's one key difference between boiling and evaporation. Okay, so evaporation can happen at any temperature. Now, an example of evaporation would be, for example, you're drying your tower, right? Your, your mom puts it out into the sun, okay? Um, or your dad has a pair of wet shoes and he puts it out in the sun. So you'd realize that your shoes or your towel eventually get dry, right? Now, the reason is because the liquid water, which is in your shoes or your wet towel, is actually evaporating. It changes from a liquid state to a gaseous state and then it just goes in the surrounding. Now, you think about it, you can't really like um, put a, a fixed temperature uh, on your surrounding, right? When it's out in the open outdoors, you cannot go, okay, you know, I, I, I need it to be at 40 degrees Celsius exactly, right? And that is exactly what it is. Evaporation happens at any temperature. So it's just a matter of, um, does it happen in a very uh, fast manner or does it happen in a very slow manner? All right, so that's evaporation for you, depending on the various factors, which I will talk about later on. So factors such as, you know, what is the surrounding temperature? Obviously, you would have realized that the higher the temperature, the faster the rate of evaporation. That's why your clothing dry faster when the environment is very hot. You know, uh, wind, wind conditions will also help. If it's very windy, your um, clothes will also dry faster. Okay? So I'm going to talk a little bit more about evaporation later on and the factors that affect evaporation um, in water cycle. And the next thing you need to know about evaporation is that it only happens at the surface okay, of your body of water. So what does it mean? So for example, I have a pot or a beaker or whatever. Now, the water may be filling up to here, but evaporation only happens at the surface of it. That's what is meant by that. Versus, if let's just say you have boiling, um, okay, it happens throughout the entire uh, solution. Okay, I'm just use purple so you can see my bubbles better. <clears throat> so if you actually have a transparent pot and and you get to actually boil water at home, you will see that the bubble starts forming at the bottom and it goes all the way up to the top. All right. So two very important factors to remember. Evapor evaporation happens at any temperature and only at the surface, which is something that is totally different from boiling. We will re revisit this concept later on. So let's go on to describing it. So once again, uh, for evaporation, you have the HTPS. Happiness takes place in the sun. So the first thing talks about heat gain, heat loss. So once again, you are changing from a liquid state to a gaseous state. So you can just say that um, the water, let's say we're talking about water droplets, okay? Somewhere, you know, on your table, or anywhere okay you want it to dry so the water droplets gain heat from the surrounding all right we have done our heat gain heat lost then we talk about temperature the temperature increases This time round, don't have to talk about a specific temperature because I told you it happens at any temperature, right? So, causing water to evaporate. Straight away, we can jump to the process where liquid water changes to water vapor. Okay, 
So once again, just very quickly to make sure that we're all on the same page, we have heat for H, temperature for T, process would be your evaporation, condensation whatsoever, and then after that, your state change. Okay? So this is for evaporation. Now we have come to our last process, finally. And I would really like you to try out on your own if you have not done so. So pause the video and then uh, perhaps you want to try on your own. And the last one that, what that we're talking about is actually condensation. Okay. So for condensation, right, um, in this part, you want to actually talk about how the water vapor in the air now becomes back into water droplets. Now, when would you get that formation of rain? So think about it, you know, uh, how do you get rain? So it's where the water vapor in the surrounding air actually changes to um, liquid water droplets and fall as rain. So we can assume that once again, the first thing that happens is that the beginning state of it is actually water vapor. So you can say water vapor. So once again, um, don't forget about your HTPS. In this case, it will lose heat. Okay, it loses heat to the surrounding or wherever cooler surrounding or or whatever it touches. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing would be temperature causing the temperature to decrease checked on temperature the water vapor would condense Alright, check on process, gaseous water vapour changes from a gas to liquid water. Okay, so check on the state change. So as you can see, this HTPS can apply for towards any of the processes, all right? So the next thing I want to talk about is also about how um, doing a state change from anywhere, let's just say doing boiling or melting, your temperature does not increase or decrease. What do I mean by that? Okay, so let's just say you are actually um, uh, let's just say you are actually boiling something. Okay, state change. So the question I want to answer is what happens to the temperature during state change. So for example, um, I give you a, a, a graph and I want to talk about boiling, right? Now, so assuming that we are looking at a, a boiling temperature curve, uh, or they can call it a boiling graph. So what it shows me is that how the temperature changes 
uh, with time when I heat an object right up to its boiling point. So let's just say we're boiling a pot of water. Now, at the start, so this is time. Let's just say when, so when you put that in minute means that um, every minute they'll actually take a reading. Okay, that's where your data log logger comes in really handy, which I've talked about. And then after that, you've got temperature that is recorded in degrees Celsius. All right. So what actually happens is if we, if we zoom in, now let's just say that we start off, so this is zero degrees, we start off with a temperature of, let's just say, the water is about 20 degrees, okay? Now, what we want to see is that during uh, a heating curve, temperature will start to increase. Now, until it reaches 100 degrees. Now, why 100 degrees? Because that is actually the you got it, the boiling point. Now, at this juncture, when it hits 100 degrees, what you would notice is that it becomes, sorry, maybe I need to erase this a little bit to make it more clear. Okay. It actually remains at 100 degrees for quite some time. Okay, can you see that for this whole period of time, it remains at 100 degrees Celsius. So knowing that it's actually 100 degrees tells me that it is boiling. Now, it is very important to note that during state change, temperature remains constant. All right, the keyword here is actually constant, which I'm going to add in now. Means that it is the same. All right. So this whole part here actually remains at 100 degrees. Now, the reason is because any heat that is taken in is used to actually change the water from a liquid water to a gaseous uh uh, state. I'm just going to pan it down. Alright, so this is the reason why the temperature doesn't increase. Now then, what happens over here is that everything has become uh, water vapour. Alright, you can call it steam if you like to, but basically um, over here is already 100% gaseous state. So during this process of uh, boiling is actually a mixture of uh, gas plus liquid. What does it mean? That means some of the liquid is still being boiled off. So any heat that you're taking in will not cause an increase in temperature because it's used to boil water. And before reaching boiling point, everything else is strictly a liquid. Okay, so let me Recap this by going through with you again. From 20 degrees, it will slowly increase in temperature. Correct? Now, at this point, the water is still liquid. Now, once it hits 100 degrees, it will start to boil. So, it will remain at 100 degrees until every single drop of liquid water has become gaseous. Alright, so we say that temperature remains constant at 100 degrees. Now, once everything has been boiled off and changed to uh, liquid water, sorry, gaseous uh, water vapor, that's where your temperature will start to increase again. Okay, which uh, is somewhere maybe say 120 degrees or whatever. Okay, it can go even higher than that. All right, so this is actually a very key concept.
that we need to know and understand. So that brings me um uh, that brings me to the conclusion of um this chapter. I will talk about evaporation in my next uh topic, which is actually the water cycle, because I just think that um this topic on its own is already very heavy. Um, and I also feel that it makes sense to talk about evaporation in um uh water cycle because um uh it's a very it's a topic that that hinges itself very heavily on evaporation. So if I actually spend time talking about um the factors affecting evaporation, then I wouldn't have to do a recap of it before I start the next chapter. So do look forward. Uh, to the next chapter on white water cycle, which is actually very exciting. So thank you once again, and I'll see you.